Hello and welcome to the movie podcast review of Twisters. My name is Tornado Shabazz and joining alongside me here are my other Tornado Wranglers, Daniel and Anthony. Daniel, how are you doing today? Yeehaw! I'm doing wonderful. I am so excited to be talking Twisters with y'all today. I feel like you were kind of going in and out of the accent. Like you were like, should I do it? Uh, no, I was I wasn't going in and out of it. I was going from not having an accent <laughs> to going into having one. Oh well, now you're like Matthew McConaughey. Felt, all right. That is how I felt leaving this movie, y'all. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> and of course, our twister head here, the Mr. Tornado himself, the spin Mr. master. Mr. Twisty. Mr. Twisty, you make good Mr. cookies. Mr. Twisty. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, I thought that too. <laughs> Anthony, how are you doing, man? I am doing well. I'm all wrangled up in my tornado attire, as you can see. I got a little... Oh, yeah. Little oh, yeah. Us. yeah. If you're Look watching this on YouTube... Which Not you should my be. first tornado. Which you should be. You should be watching this on YouTube. You know, go ahead and like and subscribe on there, obviously. Leave us a comment and tell us how awesome our shirts are because we got a little Glenn Powell action going on in our chest at the moment, right? I wish we had some Glenn mm, Powell action. Am I right? Am I right? Yeehaw. Yeehaw. If you <laughs> feel it, chase it. There you go. There you go, brother. Amen. Uh <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, of course, we are here talking about <laughs> Twisters. This is a movie that we've been leading up to for quite a while. We've been talking about it for years. I remember when the news broke and we were talking about it in the main episodes, you know, Lee Isaac Chung coming all the way from Minari, a movie that we all really loved here on the movie podcast. So it's awesome to finally be here now talking about it. I'm sure we're going to have a really, really fun conversation before I get to all the little nitty gritty things. I want to give a huge shout out to our friends over at Universal Pictures for inviting us to come watch this movie. We had a great time. And of course, we love our shirts. So thank you so much. Not my first tornado. Is that how you would say it? A tornado. Yeah. Tornado. That's a tornado is what you listen to when there's a tornado and you want to listen to some music. Oh, it's a tornado. Tor- yeah, like a, tur- a tornado. Yeah. Tur- tornado. Tornado. It almost sounds, sounds like, a, like how they want to see Toronto sometimes. Like, oh, I feel like from- we're just... We're just like harassing people from the south right now because from Oklahoma. Yeah, we're, that's not no, cool. No, we love dude. you. We're yeah. we're we having, we're having a fun time. We're fans. We're fans. No. <laughs> we're fans of the Oklahoma. It's, it's nothing but love. It is honestly nothing but love. Truly. Of course, we are the movie podcast. You can follow us every single place at the movie podcast. Our show notes are down below where we have a lot of different things. We have our x we have our instagram we have our tiktok we also have our youtube and of course we have our discord if you haven't joined the discord already you're probably going to get bullied in school because honestly like all the cool kids are joining the discord am i right or am i wrong yeah but i mean like i don't want anyone to get bullied i don't want them to get bullied either and how do they stop getting bullied by joining our discord isn't that right join the discord you're right you're right it is it is a great way to deflect all the bullying because we don't like bullies here we like Discord. No. We throw bullies into tornadoes. <laughs> God. So we kill people, I guess. No, I, I didn't say anything about killing people. I just said we throw them into tornadoes. And the tornado does so. the killing. Oh, okay. I, I like this. Like uh, you just you just pass it off. Clean. You just You're pass it off the murder. Casey Smith. It's the, Casey it's the Smith. bullet it's the bullet in the fall that kills him, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't me, Your Honor. It was the tornado. It was the, the tornado. The yeah. wind and the suffocation and then the, the tearing wind. apart. <laughs> oh, God. You know, that's just Mother Nature. That's <laughs> divine intervention. Yeah, she's under arrest. Know? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like we're going to get comments. <laughs> these guys are joking about tornadoes. I'm like, oh, my yeah. gosh, we can't win with these Listen, people. Tornadoes are truly terrifying. They are. I had a hard time watching Twister growing up because of how much it scared me. Like the I, cow, right? I have the... Like the cow, like, Julia, we got cows. Like, like that's so scary to me, just seeing... That dark cloud, and and I, I think I've told it on a main episode before, but like my first few years in like elementary school, like I had a hard time going to school. Like I always wanted to get out of it because whenever it was raining or thunderstorms, I didn't want to be there because I thought I was going to die. Like dark clouds, not a good day for Daniel. No, uh, not not for a lot of no. people, but definitely yes, I totally get it. Yeah, tornadoes well. are truly terrifying. I think any natural disaster, something that is completely out of our control, and you see something like that. It is some. It, it's like that is. How could you not believe in like a higher power at that? Something like that. Like that's scary when you see yeah. that. That's just the wrath of nature coming at you. A couple of years ago, we had um. Well, like we're like where I'm living right now, we've had like a couple of tornadoes come through our our, our little 
town. And it, it was shocking because it wasn't something that <laughs> we normally experienced. So there were two F2s that wow. that dropped in in like a subdivision of all places. And it, yeah, it, like, it tore what? down houses and stuff. But it, we're like, we're not Tornado Alley here, but Ontario gets tornadoes. We just don't get Oklahoma type of tornadoes. You know, we don't get those tornadoes. Thank God. No. Yeah. We go to the movies to experience Oklahoma tornadoes. <laughs> Jeez. God. Uh, you know, I, that's one of those things that like there's, we're, we'll talk about the movie in a second, but man, I feel like if you had watched this movie in like 40X or IMAX, I mean, our drive to the theater today was very on brand for Twisters. Horrifying. Yeah. It was like, I guess, it, cause I guess Hurricane Barrel, I want to say, is still kind of going around. So we're kind of it getting- Is Barrel? Barrel? Name, its name is Barrel. Is Barrel. that it? I, am, I, am I wrong? Wow, I, I think, think right. the name I think and I think the I name think we're is getting right. some like remnants of it, right? Because like it was yeah bad today. Like that was some of the worst weather I'd seen that we got in a while. Not a fan of the name, though. I'll be honest. Apologies no. if we have any fans of the show named Daryl. But yeah, maybe it, unless your name fan. is Daryl, then it's fine. You know, Daryl, Daryl, you you're put okay. Daryl with a B. No, you don't come at me. You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've been we've been doing some really cool things in the movie podcast. This has been probably one of the best years that we've had this show. And this is a huge thank you to everybody who's been supporting us by watching, by listening, and obviously by joining our Discord. There's been so many cool things that have happened this year. And I'll be honest, we're only at like the halfway point. So Daniel, can Seriously. you please tell the audience what is coming up for the movie podcast? Because I think it's really damn cool. It is really damn cool, and it's something that's been coming together very quickly, so we're still figuring out our plans. But, as you said, Shay, this is our fifth year on the movie podcast, and you know we're making that anniversary year. What's the anniversary for five years? Is it paper? I, is you it, know what? Is it I only like, learned about that stuff, by the way, from Gone Girl, so I didn't know that that was a thing. Oh. So is it paper you. or is it wood? What is it? Uh, I'm not I, too I'll, sure. I can take a look. I'm going to get you to look it up. But we are so delighted to announce that for the first time ever, the movie podcast is going to San Diego Comic-Con. That is right. We are going to San Diego on July 24th to check out all of the incredible things being announced from the movies to shows to comics to just everything that we love. This is a first time for us. I know we've always wanted to go to San Diego Comic-Con. We'll definitely have more information on what that all is going to look like very soon. So make sure, like Shay said, make sure you're following us on our socials so you can see everything that we get up to and we will bring it to you the second we see it. I always think back to us covering Comic-Con in 2019 and just being so excited for what's to come. And most of those movies have come out with the exception of Blade. Oh my maybe God. we'll get an update on that too. <laughs> but there's so much to look forward to. We're going into a crazy couple weeks with Deadpool and Wolverine and you know twisters and everything else that's coming out for the rest of summer stay here on the movie podcast we love what we're doing we want to keep doing it and we're going to bring you some pretty incredible coverage from san diego comic-con it's true yeah we also have alien romulus coming out too so oh my goodness don't forget don't forget about alien romulus no. put the respect on that name I, uh, uh, it's it's there. It's there. It's there. And we'll be at the panel at Comic Con <laughs> as well. We'll be too. there. Uh, so the fifth year anniversary, Daniel. We're both right here. Uh, it is. Okay. It's wood, and you know, paper comes sure. from wood. So there you go. There you go. So, is paper number one first year? I, I didn't do that much research. Now, to be honest with you, I just oh did. I, okay. I went to That's five, okay. and I'm not. I didn't wood, do one year anniversary now. There's wood. There's trees that get ripped out of the floor in twisters and from the from the from the ground. We'll, we'll steer it back. We'll fly back around the tornado and come back on track to talk about this. Yeah, movie. yeah, absolutely. And you know what, Daniel? You're right. Paper is the first year gift. Got you. Yeah. So we get to wood. We get to the origin of paper. Are we still on yeah. this? Let's get to the movie. Yeah. Oh, you want to talk about the movie? You want to talk about the movie? I'm still on this. I'm, I'm, not like, even done talking, I'm not even done talking about I'm, gonna, I'm writing the comments right now. I'm writing into the comments. <laughs> and he's the one who's you. writing in the comments. Eh? Always <laughs> All right, fine. We'll get to the movie because that's not what you've all been waiting for and we're so sorry for delaying it. Before I get to the film, though, really quickly, I just want to... Oh, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Twisters <laughs> is directed by Lee Isaac Chung and it stars Glenn Powell, Daisy Edgar Jones, and Anthony Ramos. Anthony 
Ramos, who we've had on the show and who told us how much fun he had driving that Ford F-150, that Dodge Ram, sorry, is what I meant to say. He's been driving that. You see it in the movie. And I'm not going to lie. The whole time I was like, man, I kind of want to drive this Dodge Ram too. Not a truck guy, but here we are. Anthony, as our resident tornado, as our twister. (laughs) As 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 a physical, a human form of a twister. As human form. Give us your F-1 reaction here, brother. No, there's there's only F five, F five for oh, me. Oh, give us your F five no reaction. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you know it's been 28 years since the last Twister, and it's a it's a movie that I've always wondered if there would be a sequel to. You know, like it took you know 26 years to to find that answer out because it was so popular when it came out and it was so loved. And it's a movie for me that. I have such a deep connection because I was so young when I watched it, and it, and again, it's it, it's the the frontier of visual effects and practical effects, and mixing those two together, and it really like just the making of that movie is phenomenal. Like John DeBont, how he made that movie, um, learning about it, how they did the rotoscoping, and there was no blue screen. It's just like wow. And I, I the the one scene that I remember from the original Twisters is when Joe and Bill are underneath the the bridge in the first the first tornado the inter- encounter, and you see like the nails start to pop out. And I remember like my mom telling me, "She's like, that's amazing. Like, how did they get those nails to pop out and yeah. the floorboards to shake and the mud and all that?" And it was one of those films that like just left a huge mark on me. It's like, okay, well, the, this movie is definitely one of my top five, even though it's not the greatest film ever made, but it's just it was a big part of my life because I, I wanted to be a storm chaser after it. I did a lot of science projects on storm chasing, bought storm books. It just kind of got me into learning more about tornadoes. And then I realized we can't do that here because we don't get that many tornadoes in Ontario. <laughs> and I couldn't move to Oklahoma or the tornado alley area. But um, watching this film, the the biggest thing I took away from it is the love of Oklahoma. I think there's so much love given to Oklahoma because Lee, Lee Isaac Chung is from Oklahoma. And if you've watched Minari, you've seen that story of how he kind of like the, the interpretation of how he translated into that world of Oklahoma is captured in Minari. But this movie really captures the the soul, like the the fields, the the people, the 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 life of living in a place that's normally torn apart a lot of the times <laughs> throughout the years and it's always this this thinking like i don't understand why people would live there and there's always going to be this this aura of destruction haunting them um and you know you you kind of fall in love with oklahoma with this film and you fall in love with all the characters and you fall in love with the the visuals of this film i think this these tornadoes are so massive I kept well, like our our screening of this movie wasn't the best setup for this film, and even no, 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 no. on the biggest screen, I kept thinking, "Man, I need a bigger screen to watch this movie." <laughs> like, like if someone says, "No, you got to watch it on the big screen," no, you don't just have to watch it on a big screen. You need to watch it on the biggest screen possible. You got to watch, watch it on like you got to watch you got to. Like I, yeah, because- I kept thinking about the Cinesphere too. Yeah. Like yeah. In, in Ontario, place for us. Like Rest in peace. if that if that starts opening up again and showing movies, like you need to see this movie on a tall oh, yeah. screen. Yeah. The only other option is either watching it on a giant screen or watching it at a drive-in, so you could be outside. And oh, then hopefully yeah. a tornado rips through it. But no, exactly. Uh- <laughs> about that i don't know <laughs> but you know the, the the tornadoes are massive the action is there but the biggest thing and i don't want to compare it to the original because as much as it is kind of a sequel it's not there's no real connection to the first one and i think the only real thing i noticed that i picked up on was the dorothy sciencey uh, the, the thing yeah. that dorothy five little yeah the little pods that kind of pop out that's in there but they never explain how she how they got it but overall like i I really really enjoyed it i think lee as chung took the the science route rather than the the villain route where twisters focused on tornadoes that were monsters that were hunting these people and 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 chasing them down 
Lee Isaac Chung's version of Twisters is more of a science project, understanding the science behind the tornado, getting an idea of how tornadoes... I feel like a lot of the tornado uh, aficionados and the science community is going to love those things because they go in really deep with it. Um, but overall, like I, I've really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fantastic film. One of the you know biggest rides of the summer, as they say in the summer or the summertime, this is the ride you want to be on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're not, you know, it's so fascinating, Anthony, something you said that, like, that you, you know, you grew up wanting, like, getting storm books yeah. and those science books. And, like, I remember going, like, to chapters or Indigo, and it was mostly chapters Scholastic that were around book me. Fair. Scholastic book fair. And you would buy books. And I go, this sounds like a, such a, like, an old, so like, oh, check out how old these guys are. It's like, no, you would, like, you'd buy books on topics that you were, you cared about because that's how you would learn about stuff. And I had so many books on so many just different topics and places that you like, we would just look at and you'd reference and read. And I think that's, what's so exciting about what these big movies can be. And I think of movies like interstellar. I think of movies like Oppenheimer. I think of movies like Jurassic Twisters, Park. Jurassic Park or for the fir or, or first man, where you start thinking about the science, you start thinking about these concepts that are bigger than yourselves. And it really reignites that love of learning and i again i always go back to interstellar where you know they're in school and they're like well you don't believe we went to the moon it's like you, we need that that first teaser for interstellar where it's like you just there's a love of wanting to know more and i think that's something that twisters really ignited me while watching it too it's like that that love of learning and i and i kept thinking about that and i, I love that you brought that up as well too yeah, something that I also love that you brought up, Anthony, is that it is really a love letter to Oklahoma, where Lee Isaac Chung, I think, does such a phenomenal job of making this about the people and what the people go through. This is this isn't so much about, you know, wanting to just learn about tornadoes and twisters. This is like, how can we prevent it and how can we help humanity and it's such a beautiful story it, it was funny i was reading about you know some of the production behind this film and initially they wanted to to make this movie like set in los angeles and i like i'm not even surprised because you always kind of look at how studios sometimes react you know, you know we got to go bigger and better and we got to put these tornadoes in situations that they're not normally in and there was even like a, yeah. a moment where i'm watching this movie and i'm like you know in the hands of a director who's not capable of they would have set this movie in New York and been like, oh, now these tornadoes are destroying these buildings in this big metropolitan city. But I'm so glad that Lee kind of took it and made it this film that's really about that human connection and about what goes through people, not just physically, but also emotionally. Um, I'll definitely get to my first reaction, but Daniel, please let us know what your first reaction was for Twisters. I'm right there with with Anthony, you know, like I, I was watching this movie and obviously, as, as we mentioned, it's, it wasn't an IMAX screen. It was just your kind of run of the mill screen. But I was just still so totally enamored what was happening on screen and the characters, the setting. You can't help but fall in love with a movie like this. And it reminded me so much about Top Gun Maverick, where, you know, you have a film that obviously was beloved to the first Top Gun. And now you have a movie like Twisters where you're like, okay, listen, we're not bringing any characters back, but we're very much within this world. And it feels like we are in the world of that first movie. But what I think Twisters does a lot better than the first film is that it really fleshes out, I think, its leads. And it really gives us a lot to root for with them. You know, we have Daisy Edgar Jones, who has a very personal connection to these Twisters. I think the first five or 10 minutes of this movie shows you that, these twisters are coming like they're coming to play. They're not here to, you know, just to be something in the background. There are real stakes at hand. And I love that right from the get go that the, these movies set the stakes right away for you, that anything could happen. No one is safe. And you should rightly so be really scared of what tornadoes can do. And then you get introduced to the more lighthearted moments. You know, you, Anthony Ramos, he, he's, he's he's fun in this. But it's Glenn Powell. Again, Glenn Powell is a movie star. Daisy Edgar Jones is a movie star. And them together is just absolutely incredible. Their chemistry, I, I will say, might be some of the best chemistry that Glenn Powell's had on screen with people. And obviously, he's had a lot of incredible on-screen partners over the years with, you know, Ardria Arjona and Sidney Sweeney. 
and uh, Zoe, it was Zoe Dutch, right? Who uh, he was with as well too in that film. And now Daisy Edgar Jones, they're just so charismatic with one another, even though it's not like a romantic, you know, will they, won't they type thing. There's a, I think a true respect for what each character is doing. And then you have just a giant spectacle of it all. And it's just so fun. I loved seeing these shots of these tornadoes coming in and just, again, just being terrified, but just being so awestruck of what you're seeing. Twisters is the perfect summer movie. Like movies like this are why we go watch movies on the big screen and everything from the actual, you know, licensed music in the movie, the soundtrack and the score Everything just fits so beautifully. It feels like a movie that I would have grown up loving. And that's that's something that we say here a lot on the movie podcast when you have a movie that really recaptures and ignites that feeling with you. But it really does feel like something that this is going to be a new, like just classic summer movie. This is going to be that movie for people like Anthony was the first Twister. People are going to see this and want to investigate these more and be curious and want to learn more because this is something, this is part of the world that I know, especially for a lot of people, it doesn't happen around me, so why should I care? But I hope that Twisters brings that acknowledgement up, brings that awareness up to that this is a very real thing that happens in a lot of, you know, in, in the United States, around the world, and, you know, to be mindful of it. And at the end of the day, it's just a damn entertaining movie, so I just had a blast with it. Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at a movie like Twisters, it takes you back to the 90s. It really puts you in the seat. And this movie takes place present day and they're using all the latest technology that could possibly exist. But the feel and the warmth of this movie, the stakes being high in the sense of what you're seeing and the physicality of everything and not so much that human emotional drama that sometimes bogs down movies. This movie is very straightforward. It has these characters that... You understand their objectives. You understand what they're doing. You understand their history. They're in this situation and they're kind of going with it. Something that I think that in the first twist movie that always kind of threw me off was how the movie just kind of starts. That movie really just starts and ends. And you might not connect as much with certain elements of that character's backstory. But this movie really drives it all home. And I love that you kind of have this beginning sequence in the movie that really shows you why Daisy Edgar Jones's character is the way she is. Just like in the first Twister movie, you have that reason of why Helen Hunt's character is the way that she is. You really get more of that in this movie. And, and I loved, I loved where Lee Isaac Chung was taking this. I love the homage and the, the paying it forward to the people of Oklahoma. They get some horrible tornadoes down there. And this movie shows just kind of the pain that they go through, but also the camaraderie that they have and being together. Top Gun Maverick is a fantastic example of this film because not only is Joseph Kaczynski one of the, st the story writers to this movie, but you can really feel that, you know, legacy sequel of a movie. This is phenomenal. It is epic. It is a thrill ride. Twisters is one of the best movies of the summer. And it's one of those movies that I'm fairly confident we're going to be going back to the theater to watch over and over again. Like, I need to see this in IMAX. I need to see this maybe in, even in 40X. I don't know what that would be like, but I need to see it again because, yes, the experience in the theater today might not have been the greatest, but the movie was so powerful and it was so fantastic. It literally eclipsed that moment for us. And, man, I, I just – I. I really love this movie. I love the score. I, I love the original soundtrack that also came with it. I'm not really a, a you know a, a listener of country music. Nothing against it. Just don't ever come across it. Well, maybe but maybe here maybe, I am. You're, maybe you're starting. Shay, I'm going to bring you on now. now. What? I bought you a cowboy hat. In Oklahoma. You, you know. You, you got to You know. We should have. We should buy. When we were in Dallas, we should have bought cowboy hats. But we, we were there for an nice hour. <laughs> yeah. That's how long do you need to buy a cowboy hat? Oh, you need the, the uh, they, they got to morph it to your head, both morph it, mold it. Morph, uh, they got to oh do God. a whole bunch of stuff. Morph, morph. morph. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, man? <laughs> I, I think I think the next thing we should do is get cowboy hats. I don't know why we're taking so long to do it. I think that, and maybe, we got to get branded, some, like with the little oh. cattle prod. We'll, we'll get the Yellowstone now. On. Oh God, that's a <laughs> lot. That's a big brand, though. <laughs> Are G you movie podcast or are you not movie podcast? You're not. You're not wrong, man. I've 
My bad. I, I pledge allegiance. But you know? To the film strip. I'm getting it on my cheek. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Teardrops. Getting it on my forehead right yeah. here. You'll yeah. never miss it. I, yes. I wanna, I wanna we talk... should have gone to see this in Oklahoma, though. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That would... I, and I hope they they get, like, the experience. Like, I hope they really do it. A... Not the tornadoes. No. Not no. the tornadoes. <laughs> They're probably like, we yeah, already on, see this. We don't yeah. need more of this. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, I want to talk about just the look of this movie because i did a tiktok on how this movie is shot on film go check it out go it, check it on TikTok. go check it out watch it and we'll um, include it in the show notes it's such a you know it's a risky thing because you're you're working with film visual effects artists don't like working with film because you know like you you want to test the things out before you you shoot it and you want to make sure you can get something so it's a it's a different take on on visual effects alone but the visual effects on this look fantastic but the the richness of this movie looks something like some something that we haven't experienced in a really long time since Great Oppenheimer, birthday. which is you know I feel like the, it's almost been a year, right? Like when did Oppenheimer come out? Uh, July, literally a year, literally a, a year. year ago, yeah, by Universal, Universal killing it every July. But um, <laughs> this movie, like the detail that film picks up, digital photography cannot capture what film captures like i'm just done with the crispness crispness of digital video and i'm i'm really want to go back into watching movies on film i know they're more much more expensive for sure but there's a sequence where they're at a rodeo and they're just experiencing this rodeo and this is a uh, glenn powell's character and um uh, Edgar Jones's Daisy character, Edgar Jones. Daisy Edgar yeah. Jones's character, and just the richness and the detail, the contrast. Like you, when I saw it, I'm like, man, this feels like this was captured 20 years ago. And I'm like, wow, I could have watched that, that scene way. for an That's hour. That's how yes, I, I could have watched that scene for. I could watch this movie yeah, was, for another and, hour. Like this movie could go yeah. on for three, and I've been okay. And the first it thing that been longer for sure. clicked in, it's the the thing that clicked in was these are these, this is the type of thing you you will experience and want to watch over and over again because yeah. it re- it's it has like a timeless vibe to it like 30 years from now when you watch this movie it's gonna look cool it's like it, it's just gonna look like this is what movies are yeah are yeah made, it's a great right? way so, of putting that it is timeless yeah it yeah it, it's film is a timeless thing and uh, as much as you know digital recording is a cool thing too there's something about film that when you shoot on it you get this look and you get this green. It's magic, it's, right? It, There's this magic to it, right? Yeah. It's a chemical process. It's that science. It goes back to that discovery and that curiosity that like that that it brings. Um, I, I do want to say some, you know, some critical things I have for Twisters because it's not all amazing. Um, I do think Anthony Ramos's character and kind of his whole, you know, team in that in this movie uh, really don't get a lot of, you know, room to get fleshed out as much. Uh, David Cornsweat plays a great asshole in this movie, and it made me a little scared. I'm like, I-, I don't like him in this movie. He's Superman, and there's literally a scene where he's just like yelling, being upset. And he's in this movie a lot more than I thought. I literally thought he was going to be like just a couple scenes. He's throughout the entire film. Um, there is obviously, you're learning about the two different tornado chasing teams, and, you know, one is doing this, one is doing this again. I don't want to spoil anything further, but it's kind of revealed what one of the teams is truly doing. And you're like, oh, well, I think we should have maybe explored this a little bit more. But I also get that it, it it's trying to keep it very um, not too deep, not that you're thinking about it too much. It's just like, here's the archetype of the bad guy. You get it. You've seen this before. Let's move on to the cool twisters now but but i wish there was a little bit more to to dive deep in, in, mm. into what was happening it's funny how they had those two groups though because they're very similar to the groups that we experienced in the first very one similar. but very you're nice. in the position yeah you're in the position of being this storm chaser who has funds and you glenn powell's character is kind of like how joe or bill's character who doesn't but they do it for the love of 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 the of the chase but yeah and it's and very it, different objectives too and that's right? what i loved about it i love the like these little things that are very similar to the original but are different it's like it's almost like a multiverse version of twisters but it's still yeah, like it does it yeah. takes place in the same world but it, it just there's a lot of things you're gonna see like 
when um uh Kate, right? That's her name. She she wears the yeah. the the tank top, very similar to when Helen Hunt wears her tank top. Like, there's mm-hmm. just little things like that. You just like I can see it and what you're doing. They, they like, draw a lot and like they pay a lot of homage to that first film. Yeah. I mean, obviously you mentioned Dorothy in the beginning. Like there's a lot of that. And that's the thing what I loved about this movie. It's the the barrier of entry for this film is very accessible. Like you literally do not have to have watched the first movie. It's nice to have watched the first movie so you can see more tornado action. But that's another thing that I yeah. loved so much about this movie as well, is that there is a lot of tornado action like there it's almost like every five minutes we're getting a big action sequence i'm gripping my seats like what oh my god my wife really looked at me she's like are you okay and i'm like i think everyone's gonna die in the scene and the movie <laughs> makes you think that like this they set up a yeah. lot of things this and movie they did crazy like they set up a lot of stuff this movie that you're like no one is safe like i'm like did tarantino direct this like everyone's dying like what is going on and that's not a spoiler <laughs> i promise you like there's just a lot of joking. random people but like it is just it is just such a it's just such a damn good movie and it just felt like old school it gave me the same feeling that i had when i watched top gun maverick of just like here's a movie that it's taking movie making seriously and it's not taking the yeah. politics of it seriously. It's just trying to make a damn good movie and it does a damn good job of yeah. that. The one thing that I, I learned and I always thought like, oh, that's a thing that you do is when there is a tornado happening, you kind of go under an overpass, you know, you hear it in the news and they did it in Superman or Man of Steel. They go under the overpass. But this movie is like, don't go under the overpass. Don't do it. Don't do no. it. No matter what Idiots. you do, you will be sucked in. And let me tell you, there is, I, I don't even know. Suck like, zone. You just might as well throw yourself at the tornado at that point. If you're in a situation where these, these, uh, these actors find themselves, you're just like, you know what? I'm just going to throw myself in. And if I land, I land. If I don't, sayonara. Well, let's get to our final recommendation here, our, our our weather forecast, our roundup. Anthony, please tell us what can we expect in the upper Midwest region right now? Uh, you're going to experience a, a bunch of hail and uh, a big, big ultimate cinematic ride. You like that one, right? That was a good segue. That's good. Uh, it. But nice yeah, way. no, this is a movie you want to watch on the biggest screen. It is delivers it is a great connection to the original it has its own aura it doesn't need to be the the sequel that i think a lot of people think it's going to be and i i love that i think lee isaac chung does a fantastic job of creating his own science experiment and creating twisters and and the connection between um oklahoma and the cast and and the performances and everyone who's involved it's just a fantastic movie i think a lot of people will enjoy it i know it's it's a weird thing to say but it, it almost feels like a feel good summer of the movie feel good movie of the summer even though there there's some you know hard things to watch i think Death a lot of people a lot of people will enjoy it and who doesn't who doesn't enjoy a little bit of a disaster flick uh, oh, especially yeah. nowadays um but yeah it's a must watch. Nice. Amazing. Daniel, please give us your final recommendation. Uh, for me, it's it's also it's a watch it. This is why we go to the movies is for movies like this. I am so close to giving it a real gem. I'm like, I think I need to see it in IMAX maybe once or twice to really get that proper experience. So I, I plead, go watch this on the biggest screen that you could find. Um, Lee Isaac Chung made something that's just beautiful. It's terrifying, but it's so human, and it's such a it's such a great movie. It's the perfect summer movie, and it's really interesting that when we look back at the last three years, this year's Twisters same weekend, last year it was Oppenheimer same weekend, and the year before that was Nope same weekend. All three huge summer movies that need to be seen in IMAX, and some of the three best blockbusters of this decade and i think universal really has been killing it and this fact that they all kind of share a similar release birthday every you know every year universal knows what they're doing and uh, i really can't wait to see what comes next um from them because they're doing some uh, damn good work but yeah go watch twisters it's an amazing time i was literally gonna say the same thing that like this is i think when i do the imax viewing that is what may push it to the real gem because I'm having trouble kind of giving it any kind of issues, but this is like 
just right below a real gem. It's it's a must watch. And then I'm pretty confident we'll we'll all come back and when we do a main episode six years from now, we'll all talk about yeah. how No, no, we'll do we'll we'll do a recap. We'll do a real quick recap of it. A real because quick recap. We'll, I we'll, felt the we'll same way soon. When we when we watched Oppenheimer, we didn't have the greatest experience and we based it a real gem because of the performances. This yeah. movie right. is you know, it's that real gem, but because we never experienced the feeling and the visuals the way we should have. Yeah. That's why I'm like, you're right, Shade. Like that's where I'm at in this yeah, situation. It's right there. And I'm, I'm very confident we will reconvene because I'm sure we're all going to go watch it again and we'll so come close. back and probably give you a real gem here. So it's like a, it's an IOU at the moment, but yeah, yeah go watch it. Asterix. It's an asterisk. It's an asterisk. <laughs> must watch. Like this is, this is why you go to the movies. This is a movie meant for the big screen. This is a movie you take your family to. Like I'm already thinking about, oh, my mom probably wants to go watch this. Oh, my uncle's probably want to go watch this. I told my wife, I'm like, you should take your dad to go see it. He'd love it. This is, this is the movie that if you go watch a movie once a year, this is that movie you got to go see in the theaters. So yeah. Huge shout out to our friends over at Universal Pictures. Thank you so much for inviting us to come watch this epic film. Of course, you can join our Discord and talk more about Twisters. And we're going to probably open up a little spoiler chat in that room. So if you really want to, you know, come in like a tornado into that chat, please do. Let us know what you thought of the movie. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know how annoying, annoyed you were about the banter that we had in the beginning because, hey, we love hearing that. Uh, and of course... TikTok, uh, Twitter, X, Instagram, all of those different social media websites at the movie podcast or just movie podcast. Follow us, leave us comments, go watch Anthony's video. He did such a fantastic job talking about the process of making the first Twister film and relating it to Twisters. So yeah, go ahead and do that. That was this time with the movie podcast and we'll see you in San Diego.